Hi everybody. Very good evening. My name is Krishna and about me. Uh, I actually work for an uh, one of the biggest e-commerce company in the world and I work there as a technical manager and I have close to 14 years of industry experience and apart from that I have close to 13 years of teaching experience. So that's more about me. So this is going to be our agenda. We'll first understand what is deep learning. We'll try to understand how deep learning really works. Then we will know about what are the different types of applications deep learning provides. Then we will understand about image captioning. Then we will look at the tools and frameworks required for it. Then we will see if there is uh, we will just see a small hands on based on that. Now how deep learning works. What do you mean by deep learning? So to just give you a brief. So if you look at this is your. I'm just going to draw a circle. This is your AI. And this is your artificial intelligence and this is your ML. And this part is what your DL deep learning. So what does AI means AI means making the computers think like humans or making the computers do things like what humans do. That is what the AI subject is all about. Like it's a science where it will actually try to make devices think like humans. That's the whole concept of AI. In AI, on the core part, if you see, there is this ML. ML is more about a set of bunch of algorithms or different types of models, you can say, where it will help you to learn patterns from the data and also predict new things. Predict based on, you know, if at all a new uh, data set or new information is passed, it should be able to do forecasting or prediction also. And deep learning is just one subset of ML. So it's just one part of it. Now what does deep learning really do is like the other name deep learning concept is to make particular algorithm behave just like our human brain like you have set of neurons and all the neurons how they interact if you look at our brain it is like brain has something called visual cortex system and it is heavily influenced by that so where that visual cortex system says that every neuron cell have something like an activation mechanism where in our brain there are multiple neuron cells it's certainly millions of it and each neural cell is responsible for one thing or other some neuron might be capable of sensing some neuron might be capable of you know feeling to touch or some neuron is capable of seeing some neural is capable of you know observing things by looking at it or doing analytical lot of things just like the same notion they have added in deep learning that's why the other name for deep learning is neural networks also okay so why the name deep learning is because of multiple layers of network. That's why they have put name deep. The deep means see learning here and machine learning. This is also a machine learning algorithm. Only. It's nothing different just that when they say deep the deep there means it is like you have multiple layers which actually going to learn. It's like bunch of layers something like I'll just show you the name deep comes because of you see these are all different different layers this many layers there will be multiple hidden layers because of that the name has come as deep learning. Okay now how deep learning works like I said it works like your brain where you have multiple neuron cells and in brain how it works and all just similar to that they try to make it mimic using some computer programs and in the case of computer programs each neuron is nothing but a mathematical function as such. And why you have to go to deep learning. I mean given that I have said there is like uh, you have a machine learning and deep learning is subset of it. Why can't we use machine learning models? Why should we come across deep learning is one deep learning is very good in feature extraction compared to your machine learning algorithms, which is always a challenge in ML models. So this deep learning how it helps is it helps you to do that feature extraction better when I say feature. So let's say for example, if you look at this image in this image identifying this particular child or identifying this or identifying this the image this deep learning do it at a bit, very better level compared to your machine learning model. And not only that if you look at there are multiple applications recognizing a particular handwritten digit or recognizing a particular disease from an image or recognizing whether a particular person is a COVID patient or not from his X-ray all that is identifying from an image. Those kind of computer vision techniques deep learning is really hugely successful and has been in use currently. So mostly the idea here is you mimic uh, the program will be mimicking just like your brain neural cells. That's why the name neural network and it helps you to identify the futures in a much much better way. Now like I said when I say deep neural network or deep network it is all about they have bunch of leaders uh, layers like this. That's why here it could be two layer three layer four layer. It depends. 
but any deep neural network algorithm if you take basically they will have three types of layers one is input layer output layer and hidden layer this hidden layers here it is two this is one and this is two this is your input layer and this is your output layer so you assume like why there are multiple input layers is i'll explain you with an example let's say if you have created a deep learning algorithm to identify a digit a number now if you see if i write a two i can write two like this i can write two like this or i can write two like this so these are all different forms of two now when you pass these images to this guy now what really happens is internally these multiple networks this hidden layers each layer will identify one part of this number some particular neuron here which is nothing but a mathematical function might identify the curve for that number two another part might identify that bend into another part might identify this thing into the one another part can be identifying that so each neuron will be responsible for that and even when you pass the image to a little also it should be able to identify so like that once this particular thing is done it will pass to another set of layer and that guy further able to identify so that means each shape whether it is a line diagonal straight line or a curved line or a circle all that will be identified all the features will be identified by these hidden layers in a better way and finally they propagate signals like let's say this particular thing has only two let's say this particular algorithm is to identify whether a given number is one or two maybe this one will if the output signal is coming here this particular output layer will consider this as two or this one will be considered as two that means at this level it is highly activated that means it identified that given number as two like that it will do this is at a very very high level i'm talking about but internally there is a lot of mathematical functions happening at all but overall what you need to understand is any deep neural network algorithm if you look at it they basically have these layers and the entire show is done by these hidden layers these two parts okay now deep learning applications what are the applications like you can have seen in computer vision deep learning algorithm is like really really powerful very powerful so using deep learning you can automatically uh, automatic machine translation you can do you can identify object in a photograph like you can see here different persons are identified by their name once you train your model this is your object classification and uh, not only that like when i say classification it is like differentiating from one person to another like that and it can identify automatic hand writing generation that means if you write this s or any digit it should be able to identify whether it's a number or character all that that is the character text generation and you should also identify image captions so when i say image captions let's say i showed you this image this one so by seeing the image what you feel like by seeing the image you can say that maybe a father and a kid along with their dog they are walking that's what we can infer right that we know but what if a program tell you by looking at the image if program gives you that particular sentence saying a father and son walking with their dog or a family walking with their dog so if it is able to give that is called image captioning that means based on the image it should be able to generate that caption or sentence now similarly coloration of black and white images and automatic game playing all this can be easily done using deep learning now one example which we might all aware google lens google lens if you look at it's a well trained model and it, they keep tuning it and google lens completely works on multiple things it actually uses image processing then your neural networks all that and if you see whenever you put google networks on any scan any image and as soon as it scan it automatically tell you what is the species of that flower or if you put a scanner on any barcode also it will be able to detect not only that if you give any particular company name or whatever it will give you the reviews all that part so these are all trained that's why it is able to do all that stuff that's one application of neural networks or deep learning another application is let's say you have given this image and let's say this particular words are in a different uh, language like let's see these are in english and you want in a different language like let's say spanish or some other language you can easily get it converted using this deep learning technique that is also possible this comes under the machine learning translation this part now first in the image captioning so actually here we are more talking about one set of application called image classification like for example here why we are talking about great cam first of all is here at least the basic prerequisite for this webinar is you should have some idea about cnn cnn is one of the neural network algorithm so where i'll give you a, at least idea your cnn algorithm looks something like this let's say you assume this is a cnn algorithm 
CNN means convolution neural networks and each of the hidden layers sometimes it is called as connet each of the hidden layers does some part of the job and they will have something called an activation layer it has something called max pooling and it has the input signal output signal so what happens in cnn is one thing you have to understand is whenever you pass any image to computer for computer it is not a picture for computer it is nothing but a pixels or a set of rgb values as you all know any image can be represented in terms of three colors red green blue so for computer when you give an image it is nothing but a set of numbers like let's say if i passed it to an image of a 500 by 500 size let's say this is the image size now what the computer will interpret this is your program will interpret this it will add one more thing called by three this three is for one for red one for green another for blue three colors the three channels so your image will be 500 by 400 by 3 matrix so it will convert like that you have separate functions for it like you know you have a, a image library using which you can convert a given image to a set of matrices numbers and once this converts you see it will produce a lot of pixels and each pixel will be doing one part or other like one pixel might be doing a contrast thing one pixel might be doing a particular shape feature identification like that each one will be doing one job and when you pass to an algorithm like cnn and ask to it to detect that image let's say that image is about a dog or cat and you ask that your algorithm to detect it what usually happens is that image is passed as set of you know it's all numbers it is nothing but a matrices it is passed to the hidden layers and before passing to hidden layers there will be some filtering applied here where when i say filtering applied it is a random set of values it will take mostly a 2 by 2 or a 3 by 3 matrices and it keep applying to your original matrix which is your image and what it will do is it will actually internally if you look at it do a matrix multiplication which is nothing but the dot product and after it do it produces a lot of values which is passed to it and each of these neurons or each of this particular circles which you are seeing will be responsible for identifying one feature or other so finally what each of them will be doing is they will be giving a feature map that feature map will be passed to another convolution layer. So each of the hidden layer is called con layers here. This is convolution layer one, convolution layer two. Then this guy will further identify based on the features it has produced. Maybe here it might be identifying a curve in the image, or here it might be identifying a straight line image. Here it might be identifying diagonal. So once this is passed, this further will analyze and finally come up with the right answer to you. So before that, actually, if you look at once these are all done, if you look at the CNN algorithm. Finally, it does something called max pooling, which is nothing but identifying the maximum value from the set of uh, matrices based on whether you choose three by three or two by two. Then it further flattens it and finally sends to the overall network. Now the idea here is assuming you know something about CNN. Now at least I hope I have given some understanding about CNN how it works. But overall the job is image identification, right? So now what really happens is why we are talking about this suddenly the great camp suddenly this particular topic started right this grade cam so grade cam means cam is class activation map why we need to talk about is you are training your images let's say your cnn algorithm is able to identify now how do you know if it has done a mistake how do you debug whether it's really a mistake or how do you explain that image that my particular algorithm is identifying the wrong feature of the image that's why it is causing a problem how do you identify that so grade cam is one of the technique using which you can identify what is that actually your algorithm is looking at based on that it come to a decision that this is a penguin or this is a tiger or this is a dumbbell on what is that that what is that part is what this grade cam will help you to answer because all this algorithm will tell you that this is that or that is that now how do you know whether it is really doing correct or how do you decide if there is a image classification problem so this is nothing but image classifying right classifying image as a tiger or a penguin or a dumbbell or boats or a spider so how do you classify when it is classifying how does it really come to a decision on what basis maybe some specific feature in that it might have identified dumbbell means it is a circle then this like that penguin means it will have a face then there will be like wings then it will like that it's not looking at everything if you look at let's look at the highlighted part tiger means this so these are specific features unique to that object it might have identified now when you are analyzing don't assume your machine learning will always give you correct answers sometimes because of some reason or because of the way you didn't fit the model if it didn't come to 
as expected you should really debug to understand where it went wrong now how do you know about it all that can be easily done by using this grade cam grade cam is just one popular technique grade here means gradient descent it's a one of the mathematical function you can call it as and cam means class activation map so using this technique what we can identify is when you train any model using a cnn algorithm any uh, convolution network algorithm the final output when i say this image the final output which is coming right the final output is what you will pass to grade cam now once you pass that final output which is nothing but the last convolution layer this grade cam will tell you on what basis your algorithm has decided that this is a penguin or this is a dumbbell or this is boat is what this grade cam will tell you and how it will tell you is it will highlight that portion how it highlights is this is nothing but a heat map it will just make it like highlight like this that is what the grade cam will do and this is something it's not an algorithm it's actually a paper research paper written by i think it is written by stanford university or somebody i do have the paper which is a research paper i'll share you that so based on that research paper people have introduced the you introduce this one to understand more about whether the image is rightly classified if it is classified under on basis of what feature it correctly classified is it correct or not that's what this grade cam will do okay so like i said the class activation map so it finally takes the last this is all convolution layer which is part of the cnn the last convolution layer is what is passed to this like here if you see the dog it is trying to identify the dog image and it finally come to a confirmation that it's an australian terrier but how it is saying on what feature it is based on saying that is what your grade cam will help like you can see first it has seen it has highlighted here then in the another uh, round of uh, algorithm it has identified that there's an object here and there's a dog here finally it come down to this and finally it highlighted this portion that is how it identified it so this is what the cnn is this this one cleat part up to this is cnn this part and up to relu relu is an activation function where the main job of activation function is whenever you have a value of negative any negative values are there in the matrix of the image it will just make it zero if there is a non negative value that means not a negative number and not a zero then it will make keep the value as it is that is what basically an activation function relu do and finally the convolution uh, the feature map the last convolution layer output will be passed to grade cam which is nothing but a one of the visualization technique i would say this is uh, like a visualization strategy to identify your cnn identified a particular image based on what on what basis it uniquely identified that part is what it will show it is mostly used for debugging and it is very useful in machine learning because the reason is we have got bunch of multiple hundreds of machine learning algorithms but how do you sure that it is really talking about image and it is really talking about how can you trust that it really classified that image correctly or how can you say that it classified that image but based on what feature if i show you a nine number digit maybe some algorithms might identify nine based on the curve this curve okay so let's say if my algorithm is not identifying it now how do you know where to correct unless you know your particular algorithm is mostly focused towards it that's why that curve it is identifying as nine then only you can correct it right so that kind of debugging and that kind of you know identifying what actually your algorithm is doing and how you can tweak it is what you can identify using great cam okay that's the main concept behind it okay so the tools and frameworks as usual most of the machine learning algorithms you can see you need keras which is this k you need tensorflow you need matplotlib for showing the images you need pandas you need numpy numpy keras tensorflow is more than enough and you need the jupyter notebook as well let's do so what i have used is i do have prepared and this is something which i picked from the creator of keras whoever have created keras he has shared an example on how you can use great cam in your strategy the same example is what i have used here and there are a lot of use cases if you want to see the use cases you can go to this website this is the website it is like keras.io from this only i picked this is the same one i'm going to explain you now i'm going to show you now and here he has given multiple code examples of how you can do deep learning and all so you don't need to go anywhere it's like a, the keras creator have done it his name is francis collet i think sorry if i didn't pronounce his name properly so like i said these are all you need to import so i'm just importing it then i am training one of the image which is nothing but a elephant image african elephant image and i am pre processing it and decoding the prediction that's what i am doing here so this is my image now 
what you need to understand is when you actually pass this to any algorithm like CNN on what basis this particular elephants are identified is it because of the legs or because of the trunk or because of the tail or because of the ears on what basis it finally come to addition that it is an elephant is what your great cam will help you to tell so here i have functions defined this is for getting an image into array so given an image it will convert and give me back an array because like i said every image is seen as a com is seen to computer as a set of matrices that's what this one will do and this is to create a grade cam heat map based on the grade map al gradient descent algorithm uh, that great cam algorithm so once it does so i'm just preparing image so first image what it will show me is it will show me a heat map of where in the object it is identifying so it show me that it is where this place is where it is highly intense that means based on this your whatever cn and algorithm in this case is actually identified and distinguished the image and it clearly when i'm putting i'm intentionally putting the values here print predicted and you can see it is saying african elephant it is coming to 9.8 and tusker is 6.8 so if you see this 98 percentage it is actually preferring to african elephant it is actually referring that means mostly it is identifying this tusker with 69 percentage and indian elephant maybe 54 percentage like that so this is what it is doing now you cannot see based on this right so what i do this i actually superimpose the my actual elephant image on top of it now when i say super image i actually stick my elephant image on top of it so that you can see on what areas on the original image this heat map is actually get intensed now this is that particular program where i am actually putting my image heat map on the image so if you look at this on the same elephant image you see this is the heat map thing now what it actually trying to see is if i look at it it is actually identifying the image based on the ears if you see that is where the contrast is higher comparatively okay so that's what it does okay so finally what our gate cam is helping us tell you is that based on the ears if you look at that is where the highly image actually the image is getting identified that's where the mostly your activation function is highlighted that's where so it actually indicates that when you give an elephant image it is identifying based on the ears and the size of the ears that's what it identifies and maybe when you provide an indian elephant it will distinguish in a different way okay that's what this one does similarly if i want to check for other image like i have a caught cat and dog image it identifies that and this is my cat and dog image now if i run this heat map on this so this is my original one and when i run a heat map here i am trying to identify dog and it says that dog particularly on the face feature it is identifying not on the paws or on the ears similarly let's apply the same logic on cat this one you can see it is identifying based on that okay so that's how you can do by the way this example like i said it is something i picked from the other link i gave there the same code is available so you don't need to even ask me you can directly go and pick the code from the same keras example link i have given okay this one so if you look at grade cam that's the same thing i have picked and explaining you guys so you can even pick from there okay that's one and if you want to look at the research paper on this great cam algorithm which i used to detect whether on what basis my image is identified this is the research paper okay this is the research paper you can download and start reading about it it's very interesting they will tell you where and all you can use great cam and why it is important also and believe me guys machine learning it's not about just learning algorithms and just executing that's not all it is you need to know the mathematics behind it also and here they explain how things work also okay so take a look at it it's very interesting so i just shared all that the code also is available if you look at the keras example the same great cam code is also available there so this is that paper it takes time to load any other question guys i'm done with yeah this is the paper how you explain an image on a deep neural network via gradient based localization or great cam so the paper is well written they explain everything what and all you can do all that stuff you read it it's a good one to understand things better and to identify how actually the image is classified and on what basis they are using the technique and strategy and all okay it's an interesting read by the way okay uh, i hope uh, this session helped you to understand something more than what you are aware see you all bye